Hi, I'm Beryl, and today's video is going to be a little bit different. I needed a small break from cooking. <gasps> oh, shit. And I thought that a fun video would be to share my Indian wedding with all of you. I'm not really used to doing story times, so luckily I have a ton of footage so you don't have to just watch me talk and you get to see really beautiful dancing and outfits instead, but here goes. <laughs> I met my husband through a dating app. Here we are looking so cute. We dated for two years and then got engaged and got married a year later. We had an American wedding, you know, pretty typical. You know, I had a white dress, he had a really nice suit. And then a couple of months later, we flew to India to have our big Indian wedding. And that is where the footage will begin. That was my transition, hard transition. <laughs> so I got married almost four years ago in a city called Moradabad. And that is, let me show you on a map, hold on. So Moradabad is here in Uttar Pradesh. It's just a couple of hours north of New Delhi. If you don't know, Indian weddings are a big affair. I mean, you probably do know, but maybe you've never been to one. There are multiple days of ceremonies, outfit changes, tons of guests. It's a whole thing. So I was a total fish out of water and really didn't understand what was happening most of the time. <laughs> But day one was an event called the Sangeet. And the Sangeet is where you get your henna done, had my hands and arms, I had my feet. <laughs> it was a long process, but it turned out so beautiful. And it's really just kind of a day for mostly the women to dance, get their henna done and get ready for the evening event, which is called the cocktail. And by the way, weddings can go in different orders. This is just how mine was. And the cocktail was <laughs> just wild. This huge, huge hotel space. And we had the entire backyard with a ginormous stage. I had the most beautiful dress that my sister-in-law helped me design. It was modeled after this designer named Sabia Sachi that I'm still just absolutely obsessed with. And pretty much during the cocktail, you drink a lot of alcohol, eat a lot of food, and dance for hours. Give me something new. I want it back through and through. And there are performances. So my friends who came from America to my wedding, they did a dance. I did a dance with my sister. I did a dance with my husband and his family, his parents, his aunt, his sister did a dance. My parents did a dance. It was just so much fun. I feel like that whole night, my face hurt from just smiling so much. And it was just like, it was just so special and really, really fun. And the next day, there are more ceremonies. The morning after the cocktail party was a very early morning ceremony. It was called the Chuda ceremony where I had my Chuda bracelets put on, which were my bridal bracelets. So these red bracelets that go almost halfway up or maybe more than halfway up your forearm. And these signify that you're a new bride and you wear them for however long you want. I wore mine for a month. I didn't sleep in them. <laughs> but I wore them every day, even when I came back to New York. And I had just kind of jewelry adorned all over my body. It's kind of a beautification ceremony for the bride to get ready to get married. There is another ceremony that happens and it's called the Haldi. And this is where turmeric gets put over you. We had done that actually at my in-laws house. So it wasn't a part of the main wedding ceremony, although often it can be. The beautification process complete, I then left went to go get my hair done, my makeup done, which was a whole look. Indian bridal makeup was very different makeup than what I'm used to. I mean, I don't even wear makeup really, so this was a lot. And I did ask the woman doing my makeup to kind of like reel it back a little bit. I just didn't want to feel so unlike myself, she says, as she was wearing like a full lehenga and like hair jewelry. I'm like, obviously was not looking like myself, but that was like the one thing I felt like I had a little bit of control over. 
But also this is when I get to put on my bridal lehenga, which, oh. I mean, it was really complicated. I had no idea what I was doing when I picked out my bridal dress. My sister-in-law helped me so much. She pretty much was just FaceTiming me in India at all these fabric shops. There was just beading and sequins and just, there was design all over it. It was just so special, especially when you compare it to my American wedding dress, which was just like white and straight with like a small bow in the back, just night and day, truly night and day, but there's another ceremony that happens, which is for the groom. Finally, the groom gets something. <laughs> so the groom ceremony is called the Barat, and this is where the groom enters. Maybe you've seen it with like elephants. My husband entered on a horse and he looked so cute. I mean, I wasn't there to see it, but I saw the video and there's music playing and everyone's dancing. And it's like this big kind of event that the whole family on both sides. Families are escorting the groom kind of into his new life. My parents were there to welcome them and it was just this like very sweet moment of the two of our families joining. And to be honest, I, you know, I don't think that either of our parents ever imagined this as their future. I don't think it was in anybody's plans, but everybody loves each other. And so I consider myself very, very lucky. Anyway, Groom is in, I got to arrive. I walked under this beautiful kind of like canopy with flowers hanging down. And it's not actually the wedding ceremony that happens yet. So I go onto this stage and we put these beautiful necklaces made out of orchids around each other's necks. And then we sit for photos and that If anybody else has ever been in my place here, you know what I'm talking about. That photo section when you're sitting on that couch and it's just everybody comes in to take your photo. And it's just like, I think by the end of it, I was just like this. Unmoving, stone cold, just like couldn't even smile anymore. It was exhausting. Not much happens until the wedding ceremony and our wedding ceremony happened very, very late at night because that was the auspicious time. I think that the auspicious time was 2 a.m. Couldn't have been auspicious at like, you know, 11 p.m. or 10 p.m. And it was actually this really beautiful ceremony and the electricity kept going out. So it was almost, you know, it was kind of annoying, but also really nice because it was just us lit by the fire with the last of the last people, the people who really cared about us were left to watch us actually get married. There were a lot of traditions that happened in my wedding ceremony that were things that his parents wanted and that their religion wanted. I'm not honestly, like I don't really understand all of them, but I know that we tied our cloths together, walked seven times around the fire and Bob's your uncle. I was married. <laughs> The experience was something that honestly changed me. I learned how to be comfortable in being uncomfortable. And that's something that I think is actually a really important lesson to learn. And on top of that, I, I kind of feel like it gave me a small footing in the culture of my husband and my husband's family. And that culture is really important in our everyday life. So with that, my story time is over. I hope that you guys like this video and I will see you next week with a normal cooking video again. Bye. <laughs>